All right, hello, everyone, it's Silver Kyle, and it's time to talk about The Wheel of Time, Season 1, Episode 3. Non-spoiler right away, just quickly. Um, I, I, there's a lot in Episode 3 that I like. I feel like these first three episodes worked really well all together. When they dumped all three of them at the same time, you just wanted to keep watching them. And I don't know if Episode 1 would have been enough, because I feel like 2 and 3... There's a lot more time for building uh, the characters and things like that. And while they did it in a good way in certain aspects with Rand and Matt, for example, their story is really interesting. And Lan and Nynaeve is also very good. Whereas Egwene and Perrin, while there is one scene that I did quite enjoy, the rest of their story is kind of bland. And that, uh, for, for this episode anyway. Um, so I really felt that having all three episodes, though, worked really well. You had the crazy, chaotic first episode. You had episode two where, where they're still kind of leaving and there's, you know, they, they go to Shadow, Shadow, Shadow Logarth. Whatever the hell that place is called, shadow waiting, and then eventually episode three where things are still progressing, and they introduce a new character who should have been there from the beginning. But whatever, I was very excited for that. So I still really enjoyed this, and I feel I feel like these first three episodes were perfect together all at the same time instead of just having them released once a week. I feel like you know we're able to get right into it, and we only know that there's five more episodes afterwards. So you're, you may be able to keep a lot more people interested by doing this. So now we can get into the spoilers, the fun stuff. Once again, check this out. Like, don't don't just watch these 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 videos. Like, watch the actual show. It's it's so freaking awesome. I, I I'm saying that because I'm such a big fan of the series itself, and I know that the story will just keep getting better, hopefully. And I'm also really excited for a lot of things that are to come. So anyway, let's dive into the spoilers. So it starts off with Nynaeve kind of showing how she escaped, and that the other thing too, and, and that I was interested in, because in the book she she meets up with them in another city, like. The next city after Eamon's Field is Barlon or something like that. And that's the one that we didn't have in episode two, which I really wanted them to, to, to go to. And that's where she ends up meeting them because she's like, you can't just leave with all these kids. Like th these are under my, she's the wisdom, right? And that works really well with her character. So instead, in, instead they had her like taken away with the Trollocs. And I don't think that that worked as well uh, because then it says that she tracked uh lan afterwards and i'm like that's so weird that like she has the ability to do that because she was captured by the, the trolloc and they show that two trollocs one of them was injured and the one that had grabbed her sees the uninjured trolloc and because it's a trolloc it's just like oh you're injured well you're you're just i'm gonna kill you because i enjoy killing things and then eat you like that that was really cool too and then we also see how she escapes into like the cave that, that was in the first episode where she talked to a moraine and i think it's the same cave uh, and then the Trolloc kind of goes in after her and she ends, ends up killing it. That was a cool scene too. I don't know. It shows how much of a badass that Nynaeve is. And while I do like that, I don't think it was necessarily needed for this specific part. I think just having her show up in Barlon would have worked better. Anyway, that's just the, 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 the fan of the book is saying inside of me. But I did like that it was still showed that she was capable of tracking them, I guess, which is still really weird. But anyway, um, and then we do see that, you know, she's like, okay, well, and then they're kind of like at odds, right? Because she has the, the dagger and Len slowly gets up and he's like, okay, he starts having a conversation with her. And he's, he's like, you know, she's weak right now. Can you heal her? She's like, you think I'm going to help her? Like she, and she's like, if, if, if Moraine loves them so much, why did she leave them? And he's like, she didn't leave them. I left them. And I really enjoyed the banter that they were having between the two of them. I really like the relationship between Lan and Nynaeve and in the books and in the TV show right now. And I really liked what they did in this episode with the two of them. Um, and then he's like, okay, you, and you won't kill me. And she's like, don't, don't, don't tempt me. He's like, well, go ahead. And she goes for it. And he's like, wow, you actually tried to kill me. And he just clearly is able to move out of the way. But it's just, it was, I really liked that line. It was really funny because he's he even he's surprised. He's surprised she went for it, but he was able to easily stop her. But it just shows how much of a badass that she is that she was willing to kill him because Nynaeve hates like, so many people hate Moraine in the books and in the first one anyway, and in the later books too, to a degree. A lot of them just don't trust her more so than men because you know, they're eyes today. So they don't really trust them. Cause like it, there's a whole thing about women and men in, in, in this entire series. And so they don't just really don't trust her where, whereas Egwene wants to become an eyes today. So, you know, she, she trusts her a little bit more. And Nynaeve though is just very like stubborn and she's 
used to being the top, right? She was a small fish in a big pond. Or, uh, it, sorry, she was a big fish in a small pond in Eamon's Field. And now with the eyes today there, eventually she's like completely, she, she's not in control of everything. People aren't going for her for answers. It's technically her in the book. So that's the reason why, she, another reason that I feel that she really doesn't trust Maureen. And, and also she took all the kids away and she feels like, the, like they're re her responsibility. So I really like that, but really good stuff there. Then we have Perrin and Egwene, and um, they're they're running away. And in the place that they're in is like a b very barren, open land. And I, I I don't like the barren, open land. Just for whatever reason, made made me think that these scenes are empty. Like, and, and that's not what the case is at all. Because there's still some really good stuff here. But every time they would go there, I would just be like bored for whatever reason. Sorry, my hair is really bothering me. That shouldn't be part. Uh, I wish I could cut this, but I'm, I feel like the rest is good. Um, so. I really like this scene though as they're running away and they're like okay we've been running for a while we're exhausted and we need to be warm because we're freezing and so Perrin is like taking out the flint and, and or, or the rock and, and he's trying to make fire and he's like I'm sorry I'm gonna get it I'm sorry I'm, I'm and he's like he stabs himself and he's like I'm sorry I'm gonna get it and Egwene's just like make makes the fire appear and he's like and then he's like was that you or me and I really like that scene of Perrin just being like, you know, it's my responsibility. I've killed my wife. I need to protect Egwene at least. And I, re I really like the friendship that they show between these two characters later on in the episode as well as they're as they go a little bit further and like the wolves are kind of pushing. The, the wolves is kind of weird. Uh, the wolves are kind of like pushing them in an area where there's potentially people. And he says, I don't know who's over there or if it's safe, but I'm going to go check it out first. And he's exhausted way more than Egwene is. And I don't know if that's necessarily just, well, he, he does have the big gash in his leg. So I don't know if he's actually physically hurt or it's just mentally as well. But you can see that he's completely just, I'll, I'll go check and I'll see, I'll, I'll see if it's safe. And if it's safe, I'll come back to you. And he's kind of saying things like not even looking at her and like he's out of breath. And she's like, no, we're going to go together. And it's, she says, it's not your fault that she died. And I just really like that kind of bond that they're forming and that he's still so broken and she knows exactly what he's going through. There's some really good stuff about that. It's just that everything else that kind of happens to them when they meet the traveling people, which in the books I was never really that big a fan of uh, to begin with. But uh, I just felt that like it was just eh. Uh, for when they meet up with the traveling people. Do you know the song and all that kind of stuff? I, I mean, it's kind of in the books and stuff, but I, I, I just never really cared about them to begin with. So and that, that's not really their fault. But I, I just felt that like the part where they're, they're trying to make the fire, I really liked. I liked the, the part where they're talking to each other afterwards. I, I did like that. Just the rest was kind of eh. <laughs> and then they show Rand and Matt and Rand is yelling for his friends, which makes sense. But Matt's like, you probably shouldn't do that. You know, there's people looking for us. So like, like, let's, let's not do that and try to like go back home. So now it's flipped. Now Rand, want, who didn't really want to leave, that didn't trust Moraine. Now that Egwene is potentially in danger and, you know, Perrin as well, to a degree, he says, we have to go to the White Tower. We have to go east. And Matt's like, well, now we have, we're alone and now the threat is gone at home. So we could go back. And now Matt wants to go back because he wants to be with his sisters again. And, and Matt's starting to really have, be upset with Rand. And there's, there's a little bit of strife in, in their friendship now because the, well, because of many reasons, but you know, they're, they're separated and all that kind of stuff. And, and just things are starting to weigh on Matt. And as the episode progresses, he really is starting to show that he's, bothered he's down and Rand's like you know this isn't you kind of thing what's up with you I really like that and Matt is the actor is uh doing an excellent job and I just recently found out that he's not going to be in season two and that upsets me so much he's one of the I think that he's the best casted character so far that they've really done a good job of bringing to life like they've given him I feel the most development out of all the characters in the first three episodes so far so it's really unfortunate that that it's ah. hopefully the new actor does a good job and can pick up the reins where he did but man he's he's doing a great job <laughs> and then as they're walking and they're like matt's uh like oh man it's chilly do you want to switch switch jackets he's like man we're on an adventure like think about it like when they're going to be talking about our tales and matt cawthon uh who was walking once and was a little chilly. And then that was... Rand had the jokes that time. That was really good. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed that. 
And then they, they end up into a, a, a little town where there's a person that's been like clearly killed and he's in a cage and they're kind of showing in, you know, I, I feel like towns kind of do that. And it's like, Oh, well obey the law that's in our town or else you end up dead and in a cage afterwards. It, it's a good omen kind of thing to be like, Hey, don't mess around in our town. So anyway, they go there and we end up saying that like Tom Merlin, Marilyn, Merlin, I can't remember how to pronounce it. He, the Gleeman is there. And I was so freaking happy. His song was really good. His voice is raspy. And I don't know how to, I feel about that. And he also has like a beard. And I always imagined him with just the mustache. Uh, it's, 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 it's little things that don't necessarily mess me up too much. I also thought, obviously, always thought that he had a hat. I don't remember if he actually does in, in, in the books, but for some reason, I always imagined that he would have a hat and he doesn't, uh, his, his, his jacket though, with the multicolors, that was really cool. Um, very gleaming like, uh, and, and the way that he acted afterwards as well. So then what he, what happens is that there's a guy that bumps into Matt and he's like, Oh, I'm sorry. And then the gleam, Tom bumps, bumps into the guy again. And then he says, Oh, I'm sorry. And then they start talking. He's like, a tip for the Gleeman, and he's like, "Oh no, Matt's like, ah, oh, no, I'm, I, I, I'm not in the mood for charity kind of thing." And then he goes to pay for a beer, which the innkeeper kind of forces as as their their way to pay the Gleeman. And then he's looking for his money, he can't find his purse. And then we find out that the guy had stolen it, but Tom had gone back and stolen. It. He's like looking for this kind of thing. He's like, "This is mine, though." for, you know, this is the tip for the Gleeman and also a life lesson to not be able to trust anybody in here. And also, I guess, to not be such an asshole kind of thing because he kind of was to... Because to, he's, he's being very mean and it's very unlike Matt to do this kind of stuff. Um, and the other thing too is that you kind of see right from that scene that Tom is finding a liking to them. Now, he does show up in the book. He's 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 at... he's He shows up for the big festival that happens in the, in the first... He should be there in the first episode. And that's where he kind of finds this bond to the kids that he wants. He sees himself in them. And you kind of see him with uh, Matt having that, that afterwards because they go back to the the person that was dead. And there was a jewel there that Matt wanted to get. And then he they kind of have a moment where they both show up at the same time there. And uh, Tom is like, what are you doing here? And, and, and Matt says, I could say the same thing about you. And Matt wants to, to rob the guy, whereas... Um, the, the Gleeman, Tom wants to bury him because he said that he's an eye eel. I think that's how they pronounce it. I always thought it was ale. It's not, <laughs> but uh, I eel, I think is how they pronounce it. I can't, I can't even remember. These are so, I got naive correctly. I'm just happy with that. So anyway, they, so he says, okay, we've all had de desperate moments. I'll let you do it, but you're going to have to bury him afterwards. And Tom won't even look at him when he's like, grabbing his loot like he says that he understands that where matt's coming from but he doesn't want to be any part of it he looks away and that was i liked that that was really cool and, and you you see um matt is even saying like you know like i'm sorry i just needed this and he says it to the dead body right he's trying to show respect for it so i i like that you know already tom is kind of already that father figure to, to matt already i really really like that and he also explained to aiel that the reason why he was killed is because the people here were scared they were cowards because they fear what they don't know because the aiel are very big fighters and warriors and there's all all these stories that they're potentially worse than trollocs and 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 tom says they're not not according to what i know and if the veal is up that's when you have to be afraid because that's when they're ready to kill but if the veal is down they're not a threat and the veal was down when he was murdered so it was people it was cowards is what he was saying and then there was a lot of things in here that i really liked little moments here and there of just things that characters would say the innkeeper at one point says i've been here my entire life you know i was born in this dirt everybody knows the dirt about me and then eventually when i die they're gonna bury me with that dirt and i'll never get out and i really like that because in the in, later on it's revealed that she's actually a dark friend she's there to, she traps rand and she steals his sword and tra rand eventually escapes and then he bumps into matt and then they he's like we gotta run she's she, you know she tried she stole my sword and we gotta run and they're like oh, okay and they both start running and then she, she she catches up to them and she she's in front of them and she's like you know i i, I there's no way for me to get out of here and i respected you two for being able to do that but i this world is horrible and I was given a horrible hand. So I can't do the same thing as you wanted to do, but by giving you to the dark one, because I've called a fade over here, the eyeless is coming over here to get you. I will be rewarded because the last time 
that somebody brought the dragon uh, to, to the Dark One, we still know his name as Ishmael. And I, I really like that. That was really cool. I, I, I liked the name drop and I liked that, you know, this gave proper motivation for why some people, when they become desperate, same thing with Matt. Matt is being desperate. There, there was a lot in here that was just so, so freaking good. And that's why I like this episode. Um, I think that that's pretty much it. Da, 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 da. Yeah. So, and, and then eventually, so they're having this conversation with her and then, and then they're, they're like, oh, well, what did we do? Like, because they're, you know, they, these characters are still boys. I know that they've kind of aged them a little bit more for the, for the TV show. I always see them as like 17, 18 year olds. And I think that you could have still done it for the TV show as well. I think it works a little bit more because they're a little bit more innocent and naive, uh, naive. Um, but anyway, they decided to go with them being a bit older. And then eventually she's saying stuff and then a dagger goes through her throat and Tom saves them. And he's like, okay, we got to get out of here. I'm going East. You can come with me. And Rand is like, no, I don't trust you. And it's like, the guy just saved him. And I know he killed a person, but the, she was a dark friend. She was helping like, she's, and then Matt's like, yeah, okay, I trust you. And now he's cool with going East because it's with Tom and we're going to start some kind of friendship here. And it just makes me really excited that Tom's finally in it and more relationships are going to be growing. I'm, I'm, it's really fun to have read, you know, some of the series prior to this because I get excited for different things. And that's why I, I strongly recommend reading this. I'm going to be doing a review of this eventually because I'm going to reread it. And I'll talk about specific the areas that you can go in to kind of get a better understanding of what the heck is happening in this book as well. But so far, so good. I'm enjoying this series and I cannot wait to watch episode four now and dive in to a new episode. So thank you all for watching. Keep your bearded in. Beardage.